job, boys. You give me a spot next to that girl with the blue feathers on down there. Absolutely. Guys, great job in the pits. Jimmy, great work out there, buddy. No luck involved in that one, my friend. That first voice was Earl Barbin, the spotter uh, from high on the rooftop. And Jimmy does a burnout into the neon garage here inside uh, the center of Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So a lot of fans in there can enjoy victory lane as we can. Steve Burns is there with the winner. How about that, Mike Joy, win number 49, back-to-back -back wins for Jimmy Johnson. Hits the jackpot here in Las Vegas. And Jimmy, Jimmy, talk about first the duel with Jeff Gordon at the end, the last 25 laps, and what it took to win this race. Man, that was one heck of a race. Um, all afternoon long, I gotta put this belt on. All afternoon long, Jeff and I were racing <laughs> each other so hard. It's pretty cool to be in Vegas to get this bad boy. Um, but again, Jeff and I were racing so hard there at the end of the day. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to get away from him once I got by him. And I did, and I was able to get you know get out and away from him, and everything worked well. But a uh, great day in the pits, great day on track. Uh, we have a lot of store managers here from Lowe's. Big uh, sales conference going on this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll stick around and see them Tuesday. But uh, just, just so proud of this Lowe's race team and everything we're doing in these Chevys. All right, congratulations, Jimmy. Thank you. Let's go back to Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. That's the fifth win here for Hendrick Motorsports. It was a Jeff Gordon day right until the end. Chad Knauss's call. There's Rick Hendrick and Jimmy's wife, Shani, celebrating with the winner. Uh, it, was, it was all Jeff Gordon's day until one decision, one late pit stop. You got to know that Jeff Gordon, the whole time that that 48 car was sitting back there lurking in the back, that he was sitting there wondering, has this guy got anything left or not? And am I going to be able to hold him off if he does? But those four tires, Larry, I think that was the key. Yeah, and by no means did we say that the call Steve LeCarte made was a bad call. No. With having 15 laps on those tires, the thing that Daryl and I were the most concerned with is the 34 you were going to have to run to the end. Did we not get another caution? That certainly made the difference. How about Jeff Gordon, though? Leads the most laps, but he... He's denied at the end. You know, Kevin Harvick gets right up there with him. And Harvick, I mean, you talk about a fellow who is racing and point chasing. Harvick's had a couple of really great races put together here. Yeah, you just have to be so impressed. Not with just the 48 car, but that hen that Childress group has what a turnaround. And here you got Harv. He's leading the points right now. That's going to be the guy that's going to give Jimmy Johnson a fit as they go down the road to the chase. And one year ago, I think we're all saying, is Joey Logano going to make it in Sprint Cup? <laughs> oh, and yes. I think he's leading the Joe Gibbs Brigade. <laughs> with another solid yep. finish well up in the points after finishing fifth last week. Yeah, and that on what's wrong with those children's cars? <laughs> uh, not anything. <laughs> nothing this nothing year. <laughs> anymore. We're going to pack our bags and our chips. We're headed for Atlanta. Let's go to Chris and Jeff. All right. Th thanks, you guys. It was a, a fun finish uh, here in Las Vegas uh, from going west toward Atlanta. So even though Jimmy wins it, Kevin Harvick, your points leader, and the Richard Childress racing cars again, finishing all three drivers in the top 12. Yeah, but the guy right there in third, I feel the sorry for because they had a fantastic race car. They had a game plan. Now you didn't right agree there, with I, the two tires. I don't like questioning a crew chief's decision, but I would have not put two tires on that race car. It would have been four. That's what kept me there all day long. Believe in your crew. Believe in your strategy, Steve Latart. I think you could have got the victory. So you, you handicapped the driver in that sense? I really felt like he did, yes. So for Jimmy Johnson, you know, you talk about numbers, the 48, this is 49th career win, but uh, Jeff Gordon led all but 48 laps in this race, and now Jimmy Johnson moves up to 11th all-time on the victory list. And that's my point. They had a great race car, and he had, I think, his teammate beat to that point. We mentioned Kevin Harvick, the points leader, finishing second here as Jimmy Johnson and crew celebrate. Let's check in with Matt Yoakum. What a weekend for Kevin Harvick, a victory lane appearance on Saturday. Almost got there on Sunday, a first and second. But was the biggest move for you the call from pit road, no tires in the middle of the race? Yeah, I just got to thank all these Pennzoil Ultra guys. And Gil made a great call in the middle of the race to get us track position. And once we got track position, our car was, was really fast. And uh, those guys got away from us a little bit on the, on the restart there. Kind of like they did last week. We just needed a, a complete run. But uh, all in all, to, um, to come from where we started, and, and I got us behind on, on Friday, um, got us uh, back in the field and qualifying, and, and were able to rebound from that. Those are things that we couldn't do uh, over the past couple years. So just proud of all my guys and looking forward to keep going uh, to Atlanta. A great West Coast swing for Kevin Harvick, second in California, second here in Las Vegas.
Joey Logano, I'm going to read this quote to you. Mark Martin in 2008 said, I am absolutely 100% positive that he, you, can be one of the greatest drivers that ever raced in NASCAR. Fifth last week, sixth this week, you are making progress. Uh, progress for sure. I'm so pumped up about it to, uh, to get good two top uh, top ten finishes in a row uh, with the Home Depot Toyota. I'm, uh, I'm really pumped up about it. I'm... Uh, Next week's probably going to be the, a tough one. I, I'm assuming uh, going into Atlanta, that was one of our tough tracks, but uh, we want to run good there. That's Home Depot's uh, headquarters, all the associates there. So definitely going to try really hard to uh, get another good top 10. And, uh, you know, the cool thing is you keep running up front like this and get good top 10s and top 5s. Eventually, uh, wins are going to come. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped up. Congratulations. You should be. Well, he had a dominant car. You told your team you were proud of them. Jeff, would two tires, four tires, would that have made a difference? Yeah, you know, I think uh, we just thought more guys were going to take two tires. And, uh, you know, had more guys taken two tires, I think we could have got them on four tires. Uh, you know, we had the car. And, uh, you know, that's what makes uh, leading so tough sometimes. It's uh, real tough to make uh, the right decision. And that 48 bunch is so strong, you know, you don't want to give them uh, four tires and only be uh, one or two positions behind you. We fought them off as long as we could. But I'm so, so proud of this DuPont Pepsi Max team. Uh, I mean, we were awesome all day. The car was incredible. The pit stops were awesome. And Steve called a great race all day. And I know he's beating himself up over that two-tire stop. But, uh, you know, a few more guys took two. And uh, I think we would have been all set. When you're in Vegas, 24 is always a good bet. All right, thanks, Jeff Gordon. The most laps ever led in a Las Vegas race by Jeff Gordon, but not good enough because Jimmy Johnson, the car that Jeff Gordon is part owner of with Rick Hendrick, leads 18 laps, and uh, Jimmy and crew celebrating the victory. Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers here in the Hollywood Hotel. And how about uh, Matt Kenseth? Uh, some pit problems a little bit early, hung in there, uh, but finishing in the top five. Well, you know, he, he's won here before. He understands what it takes to do certain things to get to victory lane. But I was very impressed that they made a mistake, got a wheel left loose, had to come to pit road unexpectedly things cycled through they never gave up and they battled their way back to get a really solid finish out of it it's good to see him and Todd Parrott getting along this well early in the season yeah but for Jimmy Johnson the 2009 athlete of the year first time a NASCAR driver got that award and he's off to a speedy start in 2010 with his wife and expecting a child but the decisions made and the feedback communication between he and Chad Knauss uh, even when the rivaling a teammate once again on target a second straight win well you take a look at what Chad Knauss did early in the race. I mean, Jimmy was getting frustrated because of a restart. What does he do? He comes on the radio, tells him to calm down. Jimmy says, I need to vent. That's what a crew chief is there for. Let him vent to me. Everything comes through me. I'll filter it. I'll either get him jacked up or I'll calm him down, send him on his way, and he wins the race. And we heard a difference with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Lance McGrew, the communication. Everybody handles the situation a different. <laughs> Just like I handle it with you, like <laughs> I handle it with Walter. Yeah, that we're both trouble. I know that. But we have more to come from Victory Lane. We're live in Las Vegas. Is Jimmy the winner.